Welcome in. My name is Erin. Happy Friday night. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to my tutorial. Um, for those who are brand new, the way this is going to work is I'm going to teach you step by step how to paint the painting beside me here. The painting is nameless. I invite you to help me name it. Feel free to put some name suggestions in the chat right now so I can name it for my YouTube. Uh, YouTube channel when I upload this later. Uh, but the idea is again, I'll actually paint this with you step by step. So you can have a look at the final product here. This is kind of like the goal or whatnot. Um, but I'll actually be painting it with you step by step on my own blank canvas. So I'm going to switch this out in a minute or two. So in the meantime, if you want to take a quick screenshot, go ahead. You can also find an image of this on my Instagram page, instagram.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. You can find this on my Facebook page 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 lol uh, facebook.com slash Aaron Bun paints uh, just if you want like a steady version otherwise I'll be putting this up and down as I go uh, the materials needed today again if you hit uh, if you type in the chat if you type exclamation point supplies all one word you will actually find all of the supplies listed there if you want like a copy paste uh, but otherwise uh, the colors I use I'll just tell you verbally I use red yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. Thank you, Gray. You can see all of those supplies in the chat right now. Uh, the brushes I use, I'll show them to you. Some people like to see them before they start. I've got a large flat brush. I've got a medium round brush, and I've got a small round brush. And just any combination of those is fine. You probably don't even need all of them technically. You can probably make do with one or two, but I like variety for a variety of things. Uh, I am using a 16 by 20 canvas today. You can use whatever you like, whatever size you like. If you want a piece of paper or cardboard, I know like supplies are running low in certain places. So just use whatever you want, a wall, do whatever you need. Um, I'm wearing an apron. Shout out Terry for the apron as always. I hope you're wearing something that you don't mind getting a little bit of paint on in case you get messy. Um, and I think that's really all there is. Yeah. Okay. Right after I switch, I'm going to bring this right back up. So we're going to start with the uh, the nice galactic sky. All right. And I know it looks complicated. And here's why. It's because you're not going to get it the exact same as you see it here. It's because these are all kind of very watery colors. They all kind of mold together uh, very randomly. I can teach you kind of, again, like as close as possible to how I got this, kind of the order of colors. I'll be going from light to dark, for example. Just don't worry if it doesn't look the exact same as mine. If you don't have the splotch of green up here and a little splotch of pink here and this heart shape in the sky. That's what's going to make your painting unique is if it has all these different little things. So feel free to change like sizes of these galaxies and different colors in there. Again, I kind of stuck to a certain color palette, but just change as you go. I'll teach you the techniques. Just have fun with it. This was a lot of fun to do this guy. Um, so yeah, just kind of keep that all in mind. Um, mainly what I did for the sky is I did a lot of kind of watercolor stuff. So I am using acrylics today, but I'm just going to use them with lots and lots and lots of water. So they pretty much turn into watercolors. They'll be really liquidy, really like drippy. Uh, and we're just going to apply them carefully one at a time as to not muddy up the whole thing. So ugh, I think the first color I started with was a nice yellow. It doesn't really matter the order, by the way. That's why I'm saying I think. I just kind of go from lights to dark. So I'm gonna start with a nice light yellow color. Uh, I'm gonna start to use uh, the medium round brush first. You can grab that one. You can dip in your water and you can make sure you can ha you have some yellow on your plate. Boop. Or lots of yellow. I just poured lots of yellow. Once I dip in the water, I'm not going to dry it off. I just want to keep lots of water in my bristles and I'm going to start to just grab a little bit of paint and try my best to use the water. I'll try and show you, but I know volcano plate's a little hard to show here. Kind of like using the water to dab inside the paint to really liquefy it. So again, this is my obnoxious volcano plate. It's a little bit scary. It's going to drip everywhere because it's so big. But you can see I'm just trying to grab a tiny bit of paint, putting water on it so it really, really liquefies it. It's like I'm trying to turn it into a watercolor, even though I'm using acrylic paint. So when I've got a nice watery yellow, I'm just going to start kind of blotching that on here. Blotching, very professional terms here. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So just kind of like pressing the bristles on, kind of tapping. You can brush it on if you want, just taking that kind of watery yellow and moving it around wherever you want. But again, the idea is you want it super, super watery super super thin see how it's already dripping i try and contain the drips a little bit but not so much it doesn't really really matter if it drips a little bit because we're just going to add lots of other colors on top anyway 
but at the same time I'm just trying to ma not make it super super messy. Um, I am putting this on an easel vertically. If you would prefer to just keep this uh, horizontal, just like flat on a surface, that would probably be a lot cleaner. <laughs> just being honest. So if you want to do that, please go ahead. I'm just really keeping this up here for demonstration purposes. So feel free to uh, flatten this baby out if you need to. So I'm just starting, you can see, with what I would describe as just splotches. I have just a big splotch of yellow here. I'm going to grab more. I'm going to move it over to the right and start to do some yellow over here, kind of separating some spots. And I'm going to be playing with the sky all in the top, like two thirds. I would say the sky goes at the lowest, about two thirds down. So you have all of this room to play with. In my original, I kind of kept the colors higher up and then I used the purple on the way down. So that's what I'm going to mimic as well. I'm going to keep my brighter colors kind of near the top top of the sky and then as it comes down it'll get a little more darker with purple welcome in OCD welcome in sushi no slapping we could do some slapping you could like slap the brush against the canvas slap 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 that works very professional techniques mm -hmm. whatever works whatever works putting the paint on we're gonna get even messier later too this is the uh this is kind of the clean part actually so just so you know be prepared be prepared so yeah, if there's any drips, you can see I just kind of grab them real quick so they're not going all the way down the canvas and pooling on my easel. That's really the only reason I'm doing that. Blotch, blotch, blotch. And keeping these colors wet is good because that way we can really blend them into one another wet on wet. So I'm constantly dipping my brush back into the water. Even if I'm not grabbing paint, I'm kind of just putting more water on the edges here just to keep everything nice and fresh. And that helps you kind of move the paint around too without adding too much more paint. Because I really like kind of the uh, transparent look. So that's why I'm trying to go minimal on the paint here. Just very, very watered down. Do, do, do. Lots of drippies, lots of drippies. So I'm just wiping those away. It's fine. I'm not too worried about shapes or anything here. So I'll give a quick minute and then we'll just move on to another color. You can go at whatever pace you want. If you want to add more yellow, please keep adding yellow. If you want to just move right on to another color, you can go ahead, but I'll kind of show you my order of colors and how I go about things. Is that yellow or white just on yellow? Uh, just yellow. Just yellow. I didn't mix any white in there today. Yeah, just because we're on a white canvas sushi, I don't really find a need to mix that yellow. I know what you're asking, though, because usually I do mix the yellow or the white in there. Excuse me. Yeah, you're welcome. Hey, don't slap chat. We slap the canvas, not chat. They don't deserve a slapping Todd. <laughs> Slap. You meant the canvas. Okay. And keep in mind too, I usually add like a little bit more of each color than I think I need because as I add other colors, I find they start to blend and maybe like take the color back a little bit. So there's gonna be lots of yellow here just compared to my original. If you wanna do a little comparison, you can see there's minimal amount of yellow, but I'm expecting the yellow will kind of mix with the green or mix with the orange, mix with the pink. So I'm just kind of keeping an eye out for that. I slapped their open palms. Oh, that's kind. <laughs> a nice high five slap. <laughs> there you go. Now it's high fives. Okay, <laughs> saved. Welcome in Cindy, how you doing? I have a fresh bottle of water here. How's it going? Do, do, do. Okay, so I'm going to move right along to the next color here. Um, again, you can go at whatever pace you want. If you're still happily adding yellow, just keep going. Again, maybe you've already moved on to another color. Maybe I'm too slow. That's okay. Go at your own pace. You can ask questions as you go if you fall behind or anything. But what I'm doing now is I'm mixing an orange. I'm gonna move on to a nice bright, bright orange. So I'm mixing yellow and red together on my plate, yellow and red. So if you have just primaries like me, yellow, red will make orange. Make whatever shade you want. I usually like to make my oranges with a little extra yellow. I find that makes it a little bit brighter. So if you wanna follow that, you can. Otherwise, just mix them together till you have a shade you like. Been great watching, see oh, is she gaming right now? Ooh. ooh. I see elephant crab. Oh yes, this is a fun game to play as we go. If you see anything in the sky, let us know. It'll especially start to happen when we add the purple and kind of close in the uh, brighter spaces. So if you see anything, feel free to shout it out. And in your paintings too, right? It's gonna be all a little bit different. That's the most exciting part. 
Okay, so here I go. So same thing, I have a very watery orange. I've been dipping my brush into the water, dipping into the orange. And I'm just very messily again, splotching, brushing it on. And something I'm trying to do is I am trying to mix it into the yellow a little bit. So you can see how I'm just lightly dragging it into the yellow. And that way those two colors will kind of mix together, helps blend them a bit. It just makes them interact a little bit more rather than having a blotch of yellow and a blotch of orange. You now have this like blended area of yellow orange, right? Mm hmm. Good evening, Christy. Lurking while I play with Simi. Ooh, you got the Sims up and running. Ooh. Got the new one up and running, I assume. How fun. Yeah, we got lots of Sims players in here. That's what you see. Mm hmm. How does it make you feel? So just still adding orange. Again, you don't have to copy exactly where I'm going. I would just suggest like splotching this on anywhere around the yellow, inside the yellow. You can go right inside if you want. That'll help blend it all together. Just grabbing a little bit at a time. Again, if you see it dripping, you can choose to wipe it a little if you want. You can even dab it with a paper towel if that helps. But rather than remove paint, I prefer just to kind of move it around. See where it goes, you know? Top right yellow blob looks like a fairy. Ooh. Oh, this one right here. I almost don't want to touch it. Can't forget the dino on my iPad. Oh, interesting. Yeah, maybe you need a computer. I'm not really sure, Anna. Todd was able to get it to work. Yeah, Todd, did you do anything different for the dino? I assume you just chatted more and you found it. Found it in your little inventories or something. I haven't checked it out. Yeah, I almost want to leave it. I don't want to touch it. I'm just going to like go around it. So just fill up the space as much as you like. Um, I guess the only thing I'm conscious of is that I'll eventually add purple kind of around the outsides. I'd like to use the purple uh, to darken up kind of the outside edges and kind of split the middle a little bit. But in the meantime, you can really add color wherever you want because the purple can pile on top of really anything. So just go wherever you feel with these colors. Have fun with it. Again, especially this step. It's just such a fun little step. You don't need to worry about where things are really going. It's just kind of moving this color wherever you want. As much or as little as you want to. Pick your favorite colors. If you're going uh, a little bit, I guess, outside of what I'm teaching here in terms of the colors, you can do whatever colors you want. I would just make sure you're doing them in an order that makes sense on the color wheel. So you wouldn't want to switch, for example, between yellow and then go straight to purple. Those are opposites on the color wheel and they're not going to mix very nicely. So instead you can kind of go yellow, orange, red, and then purple. And just kind of go color by color that are next to one another on the color wheel. That'll really help you. I know heck all about iPads. He's procreate. Oh good, I just admire the dino. <laughs> but what did you do to get the dino? Uh, Todd, like you got something to work, right? Correct, correct. Not use procreate. Ooh, I've messed around on it a little bit, but not a lot. I should do it more. I'm gonna make new emotes soon, actually. Not new ones, but we got some holidays coming up. And I know I said I wanted to do some ones for um, Halloween. I never got to it. I intend to do that for Christmas. I intend to make some little uh, holiday buns, snowy buns. That would be fun just to replace for a little bit. Flying socks would hastily catching up, managed to make the two stream. Ooh, let me know if I can help you. I've only applied two colors so far. I've done a lot of talking in terms of like what we're aiming for. So let me know if you have any questions about that. Just kind of like how to do this uh, this application here, but otherwise it really hasn't been a lot. I'm sure you'll be okay. Lots of time still to work with this uh, work with this sky. Bye bye elephant crab. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Wish I could keep them all. I'm on my phone. Oh okay. And I'm not on my phone. Oh okay okay. Went to Twitch's Twitch channel, chatted, and then did hard. Oh, okay. Oh yeah, the hard refresh. That's what you said. Right right right. Thank you. You did already say that. Thank you. I'm using an orange right now, Nessa, so I'm using yellow and red mixed together just to make a nice bright orange. Toot toot. Welcome in, James. How's it going? What are you up to this evening? Hello, hello. Uh, just another little trick for everybody, too. If you want some brighter colors, 
Uh, maybe you think these are a little bit too transparent for your liking. I still think they're pretty bright, but if you think they're a little transparent, uh, you can just make sure you're using a little bit less water because the water is going to make these colors a lot more quite literally transparent, so it won't be quite as bright. So if you use a little less water and kind of pile on top of where you've already gone, that's not really showing up a whole lot, but it looks quite bright and thick on mine. You can kind of brighten up certain areas if you want, just kind of tapping in a little more color wherever you want. That'll help, uh, help brighten them up. And then lastly, just every now and then, sometimes I just take water on the brush and move the colors around. So if I feel like something isn't blended enough, maybe there's some harsh edges, just using water and kind of rubbing on top will help blend them together. So again, that's very personal preference, but you can see just kind of rubbing around helps it all blend together. There we go. Give a quick minute there. Do, do, do. I'm going fine. How's the pain? Good, good, good. We just started. Just doing our nice galactic sky for now. Lots of water. There he is. You got him. Yay. Cute. Glitchy gator. Yeah, that's what we should call him. He is quite a little glitchy glitter gator. Happy Friday. <laughs> I'm gonna go get him. I'm gonna go get him after this stream. I want him to. Wahoo, wahoo. So I do three more colors in the sky, just as a heads up. Again, you can do whatever other colors you want. You can do different shades of the colors I'm using too, but I'll be doing about three more. I know, James, nothing is really, uh, nothing big has happened so far. So that's good. That's good. Nothing big and spooky. Not big and scary. No, no, no. Phew, phew, phew. I was nervous about that. It's the 13th, everybody. Ah! <laughs> that happy face is staring into my soul and saying, are you sure? It's not over yet. <gasps> okay. I'm going to move right along here. I'm going to start to do some nice pink. So pink is pretty much actually only red. What I'm doing is I'm using the same brush. I have just washed it off. I'm grabbing more water and kind of moving it around the red paint here. And when I apply it with the nice uh, kind of watery version, you can see it turns a nice bright, bright pink. If you want to change the shade of pink to something even lighter, you could mix a little bit of white in here, but this is straight red right now and that's the shade it's coming out. And it's because it's so transparent, it's becoming pink. So you can move this into the yellow, you can move this into the orange, those will all blend very nicely. So feel free to do that as much or as little as you like. Thank you, Techie Buns. Yeah, they're all so smart. This little tech team here. Same thing, if you use a little less water, you can see it comes off a little bit brighter, so you can kind of play around with how much water you're using, how much paint you're using. But it's all the same application, just kind of tapping, moving it in and out. Getting nice and messy. Milady Grokey, how's it going? What's up, what's up? I'm starting to move down further because again, we have about two thirds of space to work with. So I'm just going to start to move my pink down to make sure there's at least a little bit of color coming down. As I said, I like to keep it mostly near the top, but I'm going to bring a little bit down, start to trail it a bit. Evening, evening, my ladies. Hello, evening. Evening, evening. <laughs> and again, same thing, really trying to purposely move it in and out and that way everything kind of blends together. Lots of water, a little bit of paint, just tapping along, moving it along. Peepo juice in a way, I love it. I want to do a little spin like Peepo, but I'd knock over everything. Try and split it up too. I think I have a habit when I do this of keeping it all kind of in one splotch and I find splitting up really makes it look nice, so. Really try your best to like move things around, go up here on its own. 
maybe do a small spot and then go over somewhere else. And again, you can see new shades are being formed. The red or the pink rather into the orange makes like this nice fiery orange. It's so pretty. Just play around, have fun. Love the tacos. Yeah, it's true. Anna made a bunch more tacos. We're going to meet up soon-ish. Get some of those ready for some shipping. Again, I so appreciate that. It's so kind, Anna. And everyone loves them, I know. It's just such a little extra treat. Hi, new here. Love the atmosphere. It looks like a map to me. Ooh, it's Mioma. Is that right? Welcome in. Yeah, I love people saying what they think this looks like, especially with the galactic sky when I was first creating. So I have the original down here. It's Mioma. I painted this last week. And everyone was calling out what they saw. We saw a Pikachu in the sky. We saw a lady with curly hair at one point. There are so many different things. So this is going to be even more different, I'm sure. See a map. That's so cool. Oh, that fairy's still alive. I don't want to cover it up, but I'll probably have to. Are you painting along today or are you just having a little look-see at what's going on? Because I have some people painting along, but a lot of people are just here chatting and ha hanging out, so feel free to hang out too. Sounds good, Christy, no worries. Welcome. Ooh, wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of faces. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got it. But yeah, I try and do this about once a week, Mioma. I'll call you Mioma, if that's okay. If you prefer something else, let me know. Fairy, I'm sorry. So someone saw a fairy right here and I'm going to have to start to blend that in a little bit. But yeah, I do these tutorials once a week, but I'm on Twitch a lot more in between. So you'll see me a lot if you hang out. I'm trying to keep her intact. I'm trying to keep her intact here. I'm going to do maybe a little bit more of this red, a little bit of pink. And then we'll start to move on to some green. A lot of face in here. Your face. Yup, his face is in here. See you around, Christy. Thank you, canine. Wanted to paint, but we'll just watch for now. Thank you. No worries. I didn't know I could use uh, It's Me Mioma. Oh, no worries. Oh, it's me, Oma. Oh, okay. So would you like me to call you Oma? You let me know what you prefer. I can keep saying It's Me, Oma, if you want. I'm more than just a face. <laughs> Respect him for what he is. That's funny, James. <laughs> eyes are up here. My eyes are in my soul. I thank you a snack too. Ooh, he liked that. Okay, just a little bit more. So you can see how I'm stacking on a little more. It's getting a little bit brighter. I'm just grabbing a little more red with a little less water. So y'all maybe tap it around here. Ooh, nice and bright now. Yeah. There we go. And I'll just wait for another minute or two. I'm just going to take a wet brush and kind of move it around in the meantime, just to help kind of blend a little bit more. I keep it all very, very wet at all times as I'm moving it around. Again, it might cause drips, but I think it's worth it for all the nice blending. Oma works for me. Perfect. Okay. Do you paint it all regularly, Oma? Or just like here and there? Dabbling, thinking about it? Hannibal over here. <laughs> Friday night. <laughs> oh, man. Hello, hello. So I'm gonna go into green next and I'll, I'll warn you, green is a little bit dangerous just because we added the pinky red, but I kind of avoid the pinky red with the green and I was able to stay clear. So just giving you a heads up. I'll give you another minute though, just in case. You can wash off your brushes in preparation if you're done or just keep playing around with more water. All of the above works. I'm gonna prep my plate. Da -da -da -da. Living on the edge, mm-hmm. I'm on the edge of glory. Started trying painting in March, just looking to expand my horizons hobbies. It's so relaxing. I'm so glad you found that. I've been hearing that a lot, Oma. 
uh, during the pandemic, people kind of found art and uh, it's really been making me happy. <laughs> Means more people want to learn about it and I can teach them about it. So it's been really, really good. And I think it's something that a lot of people were scared to try at the start, but the pandemic kind of pushed them to try it and now they're loving it. So that's really good to hear. V Jonesy, thank you very much for the follow just there. My alerts are off just because I'm doing a tutorial, but welcome in. You're welcome to chat. Wild, mm-hmm. Aaron Hop, I want more paints, but I want to get acrylics despite my desire to switch to oils. <gasps> really? What can I help you with? <laughs> I can tell you all about my paints. I don't know everything about all the paints, but I can help you. Woo, yeah, welcome in. Are you painting today, V Jonesy? You're just hanging out? Welcome in either way. Yeah, get some acrylics. Join the acrylic gang gang. Let me convert you. V Jonesy, if you have any questions, let us know. Want to get the Windsor Newton acrylics? Ooh, the fancy fancy. I've never used. I checked them out in the store last week though. They looked very nice. You can see the swatches and how quality they were, honestly. You're taking class on paper. Really? Ooh. Okay, everyone, I'm going to move on to another color here. So I'm going to move on to my nice lime green color. Again, if you're not into green, don't add the green. I'm going to add some green though. So I've washed off my brush. Yeah, are you taking a class from Nessa? <laughs> Acrylic gang gang. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to mix my green. So I'm making my own custom green because I only use um, primary colors, right? So I'm mixing yellow with a little bit of phthalo blue. If you have green pre-mixed, you can use that. But I like to make mine just personally, just with the primary color. So lots of yellow, a little bit of phthalo. That'll get you a really nice lime green. Mm hmm. I bought some Liquitex base. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's such a big upgrade. It's such a small little price point, in my opinion, upgrade wise. But then the quality is beautiful. You've seen those scrape paintings that I do, right? Those are all with Liquitex basics. Nice and thick. Y'all funny? A grace? Oh, thank you. We funny crew, I guess. We're getting a little frisky on a Friday. Chilling, learning, taking it all in. Sounds good. If you have any questions, just let us know. Okay, so I've got my green ready to go here. Again, lots of water on this brush. Same idea, just kind of pushing it on, moving it around. That's very light green. I'm gonna put a little more phthalo in there. So yeah, change as you go. If you find something isn't working, just mix a little bit of a different color, try again. So I was talking about green earlier. Green does not mix super well with the pinky red that we just added. So I'm gonna try and steer clear of that. I'm trying to steer clear a little bit of the orange as well. That's not going to mix super, super well because orange has the red in there and the red is opposite of green. So mainly I'm trying to maybe move it into the yellows. Even though the yellow might be a little bit dry, you can still kind of move it in and around the yellow and then use a watery brush to kind of mix it in. So you can see I'm also not totally avoiding the orange. I'm just not trying to mix it into the orange. You can of course keep it kind of close by. Just kind of apply it a little more carefully. You just don't want to move your brush around a whole lot in between them and it might make a little bit of a muddy color. So if I'm going in between, for example, I'm just going to make sure I use a little bit less water and that way nothing's dripping or moving around too much. So you can see it still just rests there nicely. I'm just going to try and fill up some gaps just by tapping a little bit. I'm just moving it wherever I want. So same technique, same idea, just different color. Du, 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 du. About the two liter jugs that Aaron has plus brown purple, so it should be good for a long time. Yeah. And that's mostly what I use. The only time I've used Liquitex Basics thus far are those uh, very thick scrape paintings that I was doing. Windsor Newton student grade ones, $4 a two. Liquitex heavy body, I have one of them. I think that's a good shot. Yeah. Again, I do recommend the Liquitex ones. I, I can vouch for them. I've never even tried Windsor Newton though. I haven't tried the golden brand, although Joyce Rainbow Art recommends those and she rocks the acrylic, so I would trust her recommendation as well. Can we do blue in place of green? Of course, yes. I didn't put any blue in this. I didn't put any blues, turquoises, and they can totally be added for sure, Allie. That would be beautiful. Texture. Mm-hmm. Titanium white though, am I not exactly full? Yeah, I would grab some white. I find I use the most of white by far. Arteza. I've never tried those. I've never even seen those in store. I'm not sure if they're only in America. I recognize the name, but I don't think I've ever seen them here. So just kind of expanding the colorful blotch. This is getting a lot bigger than my old one. So again, just for comparison, if you want to see, again, I'll never get it exactly the same. And I will kind of close this up with some purple. As I said before, I'll use the purple to kind of go on top, cut across some areas. But I'm just kind of 
doing more than I think I need, just in case it starts to get covered up, right? A lot easier to go a little too much with acrylics rather than too little. Todd's unpopular opinion. I do not like text basics. Everyone's got their own. It's fine. It's fine. He's fine. Good luck. Local place been running out today anyway. Yeah, I would grab that white as soon as you can. Order with flick. There we go. Oh, thanks, CJ. Are you still gaming? I was told you were gaming right now. Welcome in. Oh, you are multitasking. There you go. Yeah, there she is. Arteza. Golden is expensive. Yeah, I thought they were kind of one grade below Windsor Newton, if I could be... If I'm not mistaken. Maybe I am, but I thought they were like the upgrade from Liquitex. Or Amsterdam. Amsterdam's the other one I use and they're good as well. They're kind of same level as Liquitex, I think. Mm-hmm. How many more colors? We're just adding one more after this one. I'm using the purple alley to kind of like clean... Not clean it up, but just kind of like... Um... Close it up, I should say. Yeah. So one more for me. I found golden locally. Oh, okay. Golden is super expensive. Oh, yeah. Maybe I'm wrong then. I thought it was like the one tier down from Windsor Newton, but she is. I can hear her talking about a break. Uh, about a break? Oh, okay. I'm going to get some hardcore uh, Valspar. Oh, my goodness. What's that? <laughs> I don't even know. Let's look, I guess it's two grades of acrylic. They have basics. Right, and a heavy body. Oh, okay. So you use the heavy body. Yeah, I love like I love the basics too though. I'm with Nessa. Again, basics is what I used for straight paintings and it was fine for me. But as I always say, I find it's just whatever you learn with, right? Like I've been using these start academic acrylics for so so long that I've just kind of used or learned how to use them, I guess. So to each their own. Okay, I'll give another minute or two. I'm just gonna let this sit for a little bit and then we're going to add some purple as our last color. So the purple, as I just described to Ali, will help kind of close things in a little bit. We have our very big blotch of color for the nice kind of uh, colorful galaxy area. And then the purple kind of darkens it up into more of a night sky. So we'll be adding lots of purple next. We'll be painting our new place shortly. Not sure which colors, ooh, that's always fun choosing some colors. Exactly. Yep, Todd. <laughs> I'm cursed. <laughs> yeah, I learned with like, it's the liquid, the most uh, thin liquidy stuff, the start academic acrylics. So I just know how now. If anything, the thick stuff sometimes gives me problems. I only used it for paint, uh, for scraping. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I kind of remember you saying that, James. Like when you didn't have as many art supplies, you're like, I got some house paint around. And I was like, I wonder. <laughs> There you go. Oh, it's a base. That's perfect. Paint one room and ooh, that's an idea. I wouldn't be surprised if there's some purples in there. H trap. I'm doing mine on wooden ovals. <gasps> oh, they look like little Easter eggs. Oh, it's so fun. H trap. Are you in Discord or do you do Instagram or anything? I'd love to see those or Facebook. Any of the above. I'll watch for that. I would love to see. I love when people use different uh, surfaces and everything. Yes, thank you. There's the Discord if you're familiar with Discord. Otherwise, whatever socials you're comfortable with, Instagram, Facebook, whatnot. I love when I see the paintings applied elsewhere. It's so cool. Also can cause some reactions. Ooh, bonus, bonus. All right, everybody, I'm gonna go on to my next color. So as I just described, I'll show you here as well though. Purple is the color that I would say we use the most of. So you can see the purple kind of closes everything up. So we're going to use the purple to literally go inside of our colors a little bit. I liked the idea of using the purple to kind of split up some areas as well. So this is a huge blotch right now, but I'm going to move the purple and kind of squiggle it inside to help split up some areas, bring it in kind of like these veiny looks. I really liked that personally. And of course we want to make sure that we're bringing it all the way down to about two thirds to make sure the sky goes all the way down here, just in case our little structures here go a little bit lower, right? So again, do more than you think. If you're even nervous about two thirds, go three quarters. And then that way we can just cover up. This will all layer right on top of the purple. So you don't need to worry about going below or shaping this out. You can just bring it all down as much as you want. Facebook, awesome, I'll look for it. Eee, so exciting. All right, so if you're mixing uh, primaries like me, first of all, I've washed off my brush. It's the same brush as usual. I'm mixing red and blue together. The purple I like involves a little more red. So if you want to go a little heavier on the red for a little bit of a brighter purple, that's what I would recommend. 
extra red, and a little bit of phthalo blue. The purple will still look pretty dark on your plate, but once again, when you water it down and apply it to your canvas, it'll brighten up, it'll make it a little bit lighter. So don't worry too much if it looks a little bit dark to begin with. Okay, got it on my brush. Same thing, just kind of splotching that on, moving it around. The one thing with the purple, as I said, you want to be a little bit more careful with it. We don't really want it to drip, I would say, inside a whole lot. So if it drips maybe down here, that's okay. But I just wouldn't want it to uh, drip like on top of the colors a whole lot. I may consider that for my home uh, art studio. That would be so cool. Can't fix this. Oh, no worries, Tina. Thank you for trying. No worries, no worries. Uh, yes, it'll be on YouTube later or you can actually come back to Twitch right when I'm done here and you can watch the video on Twitch um, It might not have the same buffering issues because it'll be a recorded video at that point this that at that point Excuse me <laughs> at this point that point the other point um, So yeah, you can come back whenever I'm done and you'll see the video here as well, but thanks for trying Okay so really making sure I'm getting all of the edges done as well. So if you want to carry these around the sides, you can do that, but just making sure everything's starting to get covered in the upper two thirds, top two thirds of your painting. Using that purple to just cover it all up. You can kind of dot it in a little bit. Again, kind of use the tip of your brush to kind of move it in. Again, I describe these as kind of veiny bits. They're kind of just splitting up some colors. And you can put them right on top of colors, even though purple as a color doesn't really play well with yellow, orange, even green isn't super good. Um, that doesn't mean you can't stack it on top. That just means that you don't want it to kind of mix together. You don't want to add so much water uh, that you're trying to mix them together. You're just kind of laying it on top and leaving it alone. And you might get the occasional kind of muddy spot, but you don't need to worry about it. You don't need to worry. Those small spots won't really be seen in amongst the rest of the painting. Uh, Paula, Paul, Paul Dret, welcome in. Hello, hello. How's it going? I love your little doggy greeting. It's so cute. So yeah, if you're a little nervous about going on top of the brighter colors, just go a teeny bit at a time. You can see I'm just using the tip of the brush, like lightly touching it here and there, kind of dotting it on. That way there's not too much going on. And then I can add more if I feel like it. But again, the main point is to first cover up the white and then you can do some playing. Yeah, how's your evening going? Let me know if I'm doing anything wrong there. Paul, Paul, yeah? Deborah, it's starting to look 3D. Ooh, yeah. It's all that layering. It's so much fun. That's why I love acrylics. Very easy to layer with it. Either wet on wet or then, uh, or you can let it dry and put some wet on top. It's all works out. Just all works out. Oh, thanks, Dragon. Thank you. Yeah, it's always fun to see it all come together, especially at the end especially with my um, tutorial paintings at the end, they tend to really just like come right together at the very end. You know, the one next week, the next week uh, where I'm doing the rainy city, that one especially was mind blowing at the end to see the all, all the little details on the rain droplets. It involves a few little layers, but that last layer is like, oh, it just makes it all that much better. So patience is key. I know sometimes it's tempting to like stop or to be like, I'm going to start over. I don't like how it's looking. You just got to push through it sometimes. I tell myself that all the time, even when I'm live on Twitch, you guys have heard it where I'm like, I just got to keep going. <laughs> you can hear me getting frustrated. I'm like, I'm just going to keep going. And then it always works out. And if it doesn't work out, it's okay. But at least you tried, right? You'll never know unless you try it. Oh, it's just fine. I think I knew that. Yeah, okay. All good. Cool. Eating and watching. Perfect. Totally. Yep. It's so important. Yeah, the number of times people have sent me photos of their half-completed paintings, they're like, I think I should just start over. I'm like, no, 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 no. I give them like two or three tips and they do it and they're like, oh, there you go. There you go. It's saved. It's saved. Yeah. 
Acrylic's very easy to use for that way too. Just let things dry. You can go right on top, do something completely different and save it if you will. You can do whatever you need to do. So I'm kind of trying to stick to my original and then I'm trying to like split up these two areas. So you can see I'm just kind of moving the purple right on top of these colors, just trying to make kind of two distinct colorful areas at this point. Again, you don't have to do that. I just like the idea of splitting some things up a little bit, making it a little more purple in the middle. So I'm just kind of blotching it on, moving it around a little bit. You can see again, pulling in small little veins of purple. It gives it a little more depth. Somebody said three dimensional, right? And I feel like those veins kind of help it make a little three-dimensional because you're stacking on top. Dever said 3D there. It's a lot of dipping back and forth. You can see I'm constantly going back and forth, grabbing more water, a little more paint. But once again, worth it. Yeah, Dragon, I didn't, you posted your Insta, right, to Discord? I didn't have time to look that up, but uh, I'm excited to see what you do. I believe it was you who posted from today. Wanted. You could even add a little bit of black to the outsides just if you're kind of looking for a little bit more darkness. I know personally I liked the idea of having the sky a little bit brighter. A little bit brighter. So I stuck with purples. I didn't really use uh, black until the end there. Sorry, I'm watching at the moment. Don't have any paints out tonight, but I may add some digital art and we'll want it. Ooh, okay, okay. Yeah, I've had people do some digital art along to these dragon. That's always fun. Again, I was saying before, people do all sorts of mediums. I find watercolor and gouache is pretty popular when people are painting along and they don't have acrylics. But I've, I've had a few digital art renditions, so that's been very cool to see. Can you hold the painting up close? Oh, for sure. Here you go. In fact, a cool one I saw this week is somebody was playing Animal Crossing and they used my poppy painting for their little uh, little display artwork on their easel. I thought that was the cutest thing ever. They made it into little pixels and it was a little poppy painting being displayed in Animal Crossing. Hope that helped, Allie. If you need another look, just let me know. So, a new form of digital art. Yeah, you're welcome, Allie. Pixel art, you know? Some pixel animal crossing art. That was mind blowing. I saw that and I was freaking out. I was like, no way! I may do some watercolors coming week while pet sitting since I don't have Wi Fi. Ah, okay, okay. Yeah, art with no Wi Fi is always nice. Fully disconnect, you know? Although that would mean you can't watch me, but that's okay. I just meant for tutorials, you can't really watch along with no Wi Fi unless you're using data. But honestly, good to fully disconnect. That's why I paint offline sometimes, so I can literally just like not be worrying about everything else around me and being online or communicating. It's just me and my paints. I can appreciate it for sure. All right, so I'm getting to the stage where I'm gonna start to bring the purple just further down. So I'm just grabbing lots of purple, lots of water. And I'll just be really splotching it on now, really slapping it on, if you will. And again, about two thirds of the way. So maybe like here, just to be super safe, super safe. Indeed, indefinitely, yeah. Yeah, again, I feel like I need to do more of that. I'm online so, so much. And while it's fun, it's like, sometimes I just wanna be with me in my canvas, you know? You know? Just special time, disconnected. Listening to my own copyrighted music, you know? <laughs> That's a new change. <laughs> sad, sad. Uh, okay, I need a little bit more of each color. I'm running out. 
yeah, I find music really important when I'm painting. So this whole DMCA thing has been a real bummer. But I'm trying to find some good music. I don't mind painting this, it's fun. Sometimes I just want my own playlist though. So if you did want to add again a little bit more darkness compared to the purple we already have, I think I said it before, but just in case, use more paint and less water. You can see how it's already getting darker. That's because I used a little bit less water on my brush and I'm just using more paint. That way it comes off a little bit thicker and therefore a little bit darker. There it goes. Nice, nice, nice. And again, just trail it up. Same thing as with the wet purple, just kind of trail it up so you get some darker spots. There we are. baby and it was interesting how this painting really transformed to when I first made it a week ago what did I want to do first oh it was mountains right I was gonna do mountains on top of this mountains and flowers and then after doing this really colorful sky I was like I don't know if that's gonna fit though and so I think what it ended up being is kind of like this out of this world type place. I don't know if anyone thinks this is found on earth here, but I don't think it is. I think this is like way out in space somewhere. So it's pretty cool. Just the idea of making our own space, you know? Our own sky, our own planet, all of it, all of it. Whatever you want it to look like. Mine's very purple because I love purple. get a paint again I need more red it's the most exciting thing love purple too <laughs> oh yeah yeah purples again the sky closer upper but also we'll be using purple for the whole uh kind of land area too the nice uh landmarks and such so you're gonna like it you're gonna like it Sorel, can I have this oh maybe I'll put it up in a store eventually Ooh. welcome in though how have you been Honestly, it's something I'm working on, Sorrel, so keep your eye out. I wish I could just hand it to you through the camera, though, honestly. <laughs> Here you go. Cool. So I've covered about two thirds in a messy way, maybe a little bit more over here. There we go. So just to be safe. So you can see how it all kind of closed in a little bit. Mostly purple, I would say, kind of like framing the whole thing. We still have a little bit to do with the sky. We're going to do some stars next. So I'm just going to give a couple of minutes now in case anyone's still playing around. Maybe you're done the purple and you want to go in with your watery brush and kind of move it around just a little bit carefully. Again, because purple, it becomes kind of muddy with a lot of these colors. So if you're going to move it around, just do it very delicately just a little bit on top. You don't want it to really mix with colors, rather just kind of rest on top. So feel free to do that a little bit or go back and add more colors if you want to. That's always an option. I've been good. Have you been? I'm good, thanks. Second stream of the day. Did some painting today. Did you see my painting from earlier? I mean, I'll buy it, it just has to be shipped. Oh, of course, love the colors. Thank you. <laughs> no, but wouldn't that be a cool rea reality, Sorel, if I could just like, here you go. <laughs> But yeah, I'm sure it'll be uh, up soon. Just working on that, working on getting some sort of a store and paintings together. So you can keep your eye out. But yeah, use this next minute or two to keep adding colors, playing around if you wish. Do, 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 do. 
And again, stars will be next. We've got lots of stars to add. I'll give a little comparison in the meantime if you need to see. See how they're differing? See, they're kind of similar. I got the little split going on. Lots of purple coming down. But always a little bit different. So if yours is looking a little different too, that's okay. We're on the same page. Cool. As a warning, the next step is even messier than what we've already done. So be prepared. I don't know what to say. Like, if you don't like that, then I'm sorry. <laughs> it's going to be messier. It's a fact. <laughs> you could do this a little cleaner, I guess, this next couple steps. But to get the nice galactic spray of stars, it's going to get a little bit messy. It's fun, though, I promise. It's Friday night. You might as well get a little bit messy, you know, just a wee bit. Prep my plate here. Do, do, do. Painting is always fun and messy. That's the best part. I'm glad you agree. I know some people are just sometimes like, oh, a little bit of paint on my hands. Oh no. And I'm kind of like, every day though, I've got it. And it's okay. It's going to wash off. Again, acrylic paint, another bonus, washable, very washable. You just wash your hands with water, it's all gone. You don't need any fancy cleaners or anything. You wanna be careful with clothing, but for the most part, I find if you get a little paint on there, as long as it's still wet, just soak it in water, rub it off a little bit, you'll be okay. Okay, so next step, again, messy step. We're gonna be flicking some stars onto the canvas. So I have a few types of stars I'll show you here. You can see anything that's very small and galactic looking just kind of just sprayed on. That's the step we're going to do here. Again, the very small kind of all in here. That's all the step that we're going to do. Anything just very teeny, teeny, tiny. And then we're going to manually add some sparkly stars and some larger stars. So those are the cleaner ones that you won't be messy for, but this next little bit will be messy. So just be prepared. Miko, welcome in, welcome in, milady, milady. Told you I'd be on later. How are you this evening? What are your plans? Anything exciting? So in order to do this nice messy step, what I'm doing is I'm using my medium round brush. I find this is the best one for flicking personally. Nice just like rounded brush. Anything with long bristles that helps as well. And once again, I'm dipping into my water and rubbing into white paint now. White paint. My water's a tad dirty. It's making my white maybe a little bit gray tone. That's okay, I'm not too worried. As long as it's not super, super dark, that'll be fine. So really loading up my brush as much as possible with this watery white paint. Then what I like to do, there's a few ways you can do this, but what I like to do is use my index finger. I'm gonna pull back and then let her fly. Just pop. Let's see it left a little bit of a splatter there. Maybe I'll show you a side view. You can see that a little bit better. Pull back. As much or as little as you want. So again, it's messy because it might drip down a little bit. Your fingers are gonna get very messy, but just have fun with it. Play around with the consisti consistency of the paint. If it's not flicking off a whole lot, try to make the paint a little thicker or a little thinner by using less or more water. That'll help. You'll kind of get into the groove of it, but really it is gonna be messy and you just gotta take a bunch of paint, start flicking. Some people like to kind of slam the brush against their hand. I find that even messier. I find that the control goes out the window at that point and I find paint everywhere if I do that. So instead I use the flicking method. I find it a little more controlled. I can kind of point it where I need to go and go nice and close to the canvas. It's a night, nothing planned. No worries. Like any gaming or anything. I know. I always, I always ask everyone, what's their plans? They're like, well, I'm staying in. Duh. It's like, but you can do things inside. Are you watching a movie? Are you reading? Are you gaming? Are you chatting? Glad you're here either way, Miko. Just a nice relaxing night is good too. It's a night. Maybe we can game later. Whoops! 
I might get a drip or two, that's okay. You can either wipe it away, you can cover it up with some purple if you want. Bye bye see, it just kind of disappears. So don't worry if there's a drippy or two, those can always be fixed. Turn them into shooting stars if you want, who knows, right? Oh, very messy hands. I might need to run to the sink just to wash this off in a minute. Very messy. If you're painting with someone beside you, you can maybe be nice and shield them from the splatters. Just a thought. If you have a buddy with you, be nice, no paint wars, or maybe you want a paint war. I don't know. You do you, I guess. to do with one hand. I'm just gonna move this over a bit. That's Deborah, right? It looks like coral reef in the sky. Love it. Thank you. That's a good call. It does kind of look like coral reef with all little veins coming in. That's so true. Been trying to get ahead in Genshin, uh, wanted to break and relax, sure. Yeah, it's a newer game, isn't it? Now I'm here with wine, a blank, uh, blank canvas that I've been staring at for 50 minutes. Oh, Miko! If you're not feeling it, don't worry about it. But maybe you see something like halfway through that you like and you can try it out. Maybe you just want to mix some color, like just do the sky, you know? Like you just mix some wet colors on top of each other. That would be fun. Enjoy your wine in the meantime, dude. Oh, it's a nice little setup. Yeah, don't force it if you're not feeling it. Maybe something will come though with a little glass. Science says we are most creative after one drink, apparently. Apparently. Just one though. If you go more than one, then you start to go down again. Okay, I think that's enough for me. If you want to keep splatter, you certainly could. I'm just going to wash my hand off super quick because my gosh, it's messy. Be right back. Oops, there goes my brushes. Genshin for a while, just relaxing. Oh, you've been playing what for a while? Hold on. <laughs> Did you link something? It's start out for me, dragon. All right, Lily here, seven years, needs to get to bed. No worries, we'll finish up tomorrow. Oh, have fun. That's good, that's good. Enjoy the rest of your night. You too, Kyla and Lily, thank you so much for joining in. You got a nice sky going, you got some stars on there. You can always add the extras later, of course. Good night. Great excuse for wine, right? <laughs> Any drink. Mm-hmm. Look it up. Google told me that, so I believe it. <laughs> There's so much to do in Genshin, but I wanted to do too much at once. Got too ahead of myself. Still to upgrade if it cares. Ah. Is purple supposed to be blotchy like white showing through? Yes. I like it that way personally. And I actually do add some blotches of white. I'm just waiting for this to dry a little bit more before doing it. But yeah, see here? It's kind of like the paint was a little thinner up there and then a little thicker in other areas. So yeah, I personally like it blotchy. You could definitely even add it if you want though, Allie. It's feral, but with an A in between an R and an A. A in between the R and the feral. Still early. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay, it's because you put the dot. That's why, that's why. You linked that in our Discord. I remember now. Okay, okay. Cool. Good to know. Yes, I remember you being excited about that in the Discord, saying it was like early stages, but fun. That's why. The bot just thought you were linking something. It was just the dot. Whoopsie. Okay. I had to stop. I've been awake since my man getting spasms. Oh, okay. No worries. Phoenix, you take your time. And that goes for everybody. Just go at your own pace. That's totally fine. I'm going to start to add some manual stars now. So manual meaning like I control where they go. <laughs> They're not just randomly splattered on. So we have two kinds we have. We have um, kind of like sparkly ones that are nice and big. And then we have just regular dots that are just a little bit bigger, a little bit brighter. 
So I've switched now to a nice small teeny tiny brush for that. So I would just grab your smallest brush you have. You can go into the regular white paint. You don't need to water it down this time, just regular white paint. And I'll start with some dots. So I'm just going to literally dot on some stars and you can see how much brighter they show up, right? So I'm just dipping into the white, using the tip of the brush, and tapping away. Wherever you want, you can kind of sporadically put them on. You can put them on in clusters if you want. You can do some little constellations in the sky. Again, it's your sky. You can do whatever you want. Again, shooting stars would be a fun idea. I just add them really everywhere. There's no particular rhyme or reason. I'm just trying to dot them on wherever. Understandable, and yeah, sometimes it automatically links to it. Right. Yeah, it just assumes. I don't know. The bot's a little funny sometimes, but we keep it around, you know? See how it just kind of twinkles it up, even just with a few of those. It's more than a few, but you know, just with little dots. Tap, 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 tap. It's your world, add a unicorn or two. <laughs> are you in the middle of doing that, Anna? Or are you gonna do this a little later? Or two, ooh. So in addition to those dots, you can also do a few little uh, crisscrossy stars, like little twinkly stars. I'll show you a few here in my original. So these are all just straight lines intersecting with one another. So you can either do a vertical, horizontal, two diagonals if you want it really sparkly, or sometimes I just do a horizontal, vertical kind of meeting in the middle. Gives it just a little bit of a different look. And they change in size. You can make them a little more round. You can make them a little like taller vertically if you want. I would say this one's a little taller vertically up and down rather than side to side. So I just really change up the look of each and every one as much as I can. So I'm just using white paint on my teeny tiny brush. Just trying to use the tip of the brush. And like I said, just doing some straight lines wherever you want. So here's a straight vertical. I'm gonna go horizontal through it. Maybe I'll do two diagonals. Ta-da! Bob quote, you too can paint almighty pictures. <laughs> uh, Oma, hubby is home. Thank you for letting me watch. Oh, of course! I enjoy this a lot. Good, good, good. Have a lovely evening. Be back again. I'll see you again. Have a fantastic evening with hubby. My paints are packed away. Oh, right, right, right. Just imagining the masterpiece that I'll work on in January. Mm-hmm. I forgot. Look, damn, at least one unicorn. At least one. I keep forgetting that, Anna. Because you talk about the painting like you're doing it, and I'm like, oh, are you doing it? And then I totally forget your situation. Soon, though. Soon, though. Twinkle, 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 twinkle. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Yes, I can, Court, if you'd like. I'll do a couple more twinklies, and I'll do a uh, shooting star for you. Let's quickly put on a couple more. Again, I really like the look of just the up and down, left and right as well. I think those are cute. Kind of like half twinkly. Mm-hmm. Let's do like one more. Okay, so for a shooting star, what I would do, Court, and anyone else interested, is I would just grab a little bit of white. I would do a nice white dot wherever you want it to go. So I'm kind of making it a little bit bigger. You can see I'm kind of swirling around to make it a little bigger. So you start with that. Then what I do is I wipe off my brush. So there's no paint remaining. I use the paint that's sitting right here and I'm gonna drag it out as if it has a little tail from the shooting star. So I'm just using the plain brush, clean brush, and then I'm gonna drag out in a little curve. And because it's only dragging a little bit of paint, 
you can see it starts bright and then turns a little bit more transparent as it goes. So using the paint on the canvas, dragging it out like that. You can either keep it just a nice round dot or you can add a little twinkle at the end. But mainly what I'm trying to do is keep it nice and bright here. So either by a white, bright white dot or a bright twinkle. And then allowing it to kind of curve out just to kind of like fade out a little bit. So dragging the paint, that's how I describe it. Dragging or scraping the paint away. Mm-hmm. It's all good. I packed them away so I don't make a mess. Right. Yeah, thanks, dragon. I'll give another minute or so if you're still adding some stars or maybe doing a shooting star now that I've done that. It's a nice addition. I should have just added that to the original. Anything to make it more spacey. You can add a moon in there if you want. Like I said, constellations make it unique to you. Add a little UFO. Why the heck not? Who knows what's up there? Aliens. I beat you. Unless you mean like floating aliens with little little bodies just floating in the sky. That would be cute too. An Among Us character floating away. Who knows? Yeah. Beat you again. Yeah. Oh yes. <laughs> All right, and I have one more addition to the sky, which is optional. All of this is optional. You don't have to do anything I'm doing. Um, but I like to add these little white spaces kind of right in the middles of the brightest spots. So you see kind of like here, here, here. So it's not really like stars or splatter. It's actually just dry brushing of white on top to make it look super, super bright, super, super like hot in between all these beautiful colors. And I said it already, but the way I do it is by dry brushing. So I'm grabbing just a little bit of paint on my teeny tiny brush. And just a little bit of paint. You don't want a blob of it. So once you grab the white paint, you can kind of tap it off or rub it off somewhere. I'm just rubbing it on my towel on my lap here. And I'm just gonna go right in the middle of my brightest areas. So for me, the brightest areas is probably like the yellow in here, maybe yellow in here. Just kind of rubbing it around. So using just the tiny amount of paint on my brush, rubbing it on top. So it comes off nice and soft, but creates a nice kind of like hot spot in between. I can see me doing this in multiple color schemes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's so flexible that way. You could like, you could choose only cool colors or warm colors, make it match your room or something. You can do many, many different versions. No, -uh, I typed it first. We didn't see it first, so I was first. It's looking so good. It's really enjoyable to watch the stream. Oh, good! Oh, I'm so glad. I love those little bees, by the way. Those little uwu bees. The Twitch emotes, they're my favorite. The uwu one is my favorite. I already said it. The one that goes, uwu. He's so cute. This will turn into another chat controls the painting with all the suggestions. It's what he wants. <laughs> He's trying. He's trying. Don't worry, I'll do another one of those before the end of the year. Clip it, ship it. I will though. It was so much fun, we gotta do it again. See, it just, it just brightens it up a little bit more. I know it's a small detail, but I think it's pretty necessary. So I wanted to point it out for everybody. Yes, me too, that one with the, yeah, I know he's my favorite. He displays all of my emotions at all times. <laughs> I resonate with him so much. Okay, so I'll just leave another minute or so. Thank you, Anna. Do, please hold me to it. I don't have a date planned for it, but it'll happen, it'll happen. Gotta do some other stuff with the first painting first though. Eyes wide open. Really makes it pop, looking awesome. Thank you, Trent. <coughs> Excuse me, thank you. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was a necessary step. It just brightened up everything a little bit more. It just made it look like it was even more, like someone said three dimensional earlier. Like it's really going in, you know? Like what's really in there, the brightest spots. Mm-hmm, like opposite of black holes. Let's 
have a comparison. Dang, see, so, so similar yet so different. <clears throat> Excuse me. Tour merch? Maybe just like some sort of merch with the chat painting, but anyway. I'm making so many statements and promises right now. <laughs> it's really stressing me out. <laughs> there we go, okay. <laughs> Jesus. Scary, so many, so many statements. Okay, why did I put this down? I wanna talk about it. To tours, not tours, just like something with the painting, okay, okay, okay. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this bottom part here. So this is what I would call like the planet that we're on. Again, I think we're out of this world. I don't think we're on Earth right now. We're somewhere else out in space. We have these huge kind of rock formations here. So this is all different shades of purple, actually. Um, this is more of a bluish purple. And then this one is more of a reddish purple. So I'm gonna lay down this color first. I'm gonna lay down the dark shade that you see here and then we'll pile on the lighter shades later. So this is still purple. Just blue with a little bit of red. So lots of blue, a little bit of red. And I'll show you how I make these little structures here. I'm gonna use a medium, oh no, a large brush, excuse me. I'm using the large flat brush. Too many tattoos. <laughs> What's a dip titch? Let me know, I'd like to look into that. How do people multi -time? I don't know, I don't know, Cindy, I know. <laughs> I'm with you. People open four streams at once and are able to manage. I, I get overwhelmed with two. I understand, Cindy. It's totally fine. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so on my plate, everybody, again, red and blue mixed together, mostly blue. To tours. Oh, get out of here. No, 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 no. I know. I saw with my own eyes. Oh, my God. Why would you do this for him? Did you clip that? You clipped that. Why would you do this? Why would you do this? <laughs> I can't believe you've done this. Lots of blue, a little bit of red. He'll never let me hear the end of it now. I beat him twice. I saw it. Big brush. Okay, so I had trouble with these at the start. Let me tell you why. When I was first making these, I was having trouble um, kind of like making like a face with um, the highlight here and then the low light. And I found what the key was, was kind of making these little points at the top of each one. So I kind of do a quick angle up, longer angle down, and then you can kind of pull down again and then go up, down, straight down. Up, down, straight down. So you're kind of making small little peaks at the at the top of each one. They're not so like triangular, but they're just kind of like a little bit horizontal going a little up, a little down, and then straight down to make a big, uh, big drop. So I kind of do a little step ladder down in a way. You're kind of going down, 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 about three quarters of the way across, and then up, 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 up. if you like the look that I did. So I'll go through that here with this new color. So I'm just using kind of the uh, the edge of the brush here. You can use the brush however you like, but I like the large flat brush so I can use the, uh, the edge like this. Again, I'm going slightly angled up, slightly angled down. So I'm making a little bit of a point and then I'll pull it straight down. You don't need to bring it all the way down because each uh, each kind of pillar is just going to collide with the next one. And we'll kind of fill it all in together. Two similar pieces together. Oh, okay. I see, I see. I have not, James, no. So after pulling it down, you're gonna start a little further down now. So you're getting a different little pillar or a different little structure, slightly up slightly down, straight down again. So you're making yet another point. You can make these as wide or as thin as you like, by the way, they don't all need to be the same width. If anything, I like to change them up a little bit. Up, down, straight down. You can fill in as you go if you want. I'm just trying to help you see kind of the different structures there. Is that a same purple? It's a different purple. So it's just more blue mixed in. Different purple than the sky, if that's what you're asking. More blue, less red this time. 
just to get a little more of a contrast. Slightly up, slightly down, straight down. So that one's a smaller one. No worries, Sushi. And here and there, if you want to just do a quick little ledge, like kind of pull over and down, you can do that as well. But you won't get the uh, the three-dimensional look with too many of those. So I just do that every now and then, not too many. And again, I'm really only looking at the top edge right now. I'll fix up the bottom later. Back for a moment. Hi, everyone. I'm studying disgusting. What were you doing? Were you working out? <laughs> You're funny, Barbie. Hi, everyone. I'm sweaty and disgusting. Well, hi there, sweaty and disgusting. How's it going? Just dad jokes. Hee -hee. All right. So the way I like to have this is kind of coming down, 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 down. And then about three quarters of the way across, I'll go up, up, up real quick. So I'm doing the same thing, just kind of opposite. So now what I'm doing is I'm doing a straight edge going up. So it's like a nice tall structure. And then doing the little peak again. So slightly up, slightly down. Do one more just nice and tall, kind of finishing it off here. There we go. So you can really see the tops of those. What I'm doing now is I'm just going to fill those in. I'm going to bring them down about just below three quarters of the way. So I'm going to do a semi straight line like this. It's kind of straight, it's not the best. Just played Beat Saber. Ah, oh, okay, okay. Mm hmm. And whenever you're happy with that top part, I personally like to just kind of sketch it all out first. You can do whatever order you want. I like to sketch it all out and then I'm just filling her in. So just stroking up and down with lots of that purple to cover up anything in the background. Okay, shower sounds good. Yeah, good luck, have fun. You know how it goes. So again, it's gonna be all one structure for now. We will add the highlights on top later to help kind of see the individual structures and all the different highlights and lowlights going on in there. We're just starting with the darkest color, this nice bluish purple. And again, it'll help you to do a nice horizontal bottom. But if it gets a little messy, don't worry about it. You can always stack this next purple on top to help clean it up. I'm sure I will have to. It looks a little messy on mine already. horizontal strokes just to fill it in go ahead but I would still recommend finishing off with vertical just to keep it all consistent Again, you can see the structure slowly going down. You can still kind of see them individually. When we add the highlights, you'll see them a lot better, but they go up, down, up, down, up, down, kind of step laddering down. I might even make this one a little taller just to make it a little more dramatic. You can change the heights of yours as you go if you like. I'm gonna start maybe up here. I just know I like their size changes to be a little bit more dramatic. So I'm gonna start it a little higher. I'll maybe raise this one up a bit, but not much. 
and then kind of let them go from there. Easy fix, see? Just raise up a couple, then you have more dramatic going all the way from the top to the bottom. Cool. Again, just completely out of this world. I don't know where the heck this is. Purple structures, purple land. Bring me there. Where's the red at? Let's get more. All right, I'll give another minute just in case you're still working on that. Then we'll add the nice kind of like reddish purple bottom here. So again, just as a reminder what we've got. So yeah, I'll have to overlap a little bit. That'll be fine. Okay. So when you're ready with those structures, I'm just using that same brush. I'm giving it a little wash, even though we're using purple again. Sometimes it's good just to kind of start fresh with your brush. It doesn't get too loaded up with paint. And I'll now mix a purple that has much more red rather than blue. So very similar, if not the same to this paint up here. The only difference is we're not gonna load it up with water this time. We're only gonna use the paint on the plate here. So lots of red, a little bit of blue. It'll make it a little more of a bright kind of maroon red, I would say, or maroon purple, excuse me. You'll see a nice difference. See that? See how different that is? They're still both purple. This is just a bluish purple versus a reddish purple. I like this one better. This is my color. So for this part, I'm stroking left and right on the bottom. I'm filling up the rest of the gap on the bottom. And you can also overlap a little bit if you need to. So just kind of bring it right on top. It might turn a little bit darker considering the background is a little bluish purple, but it should be enough that you can kind of see the difference from where the uh, reddish purple starts to the bluish purple. See that? I'm just gonna go in front to make sure I get it nice and straight, as straight as I can. And again, up to you how much of this you wanna add. You can either make it very low to the canvas, a little bit higher, I just want to make sure I have enough room for a little road. I liked the idea of a little road kind of going into these structures. So I just want to make sure there's enough room for me to do a little wiggly road going that way. If you want it even a little bit brighter, you could always try adding a little bit of white. I personally don't, but if you want it just a little bit brighter, again, a little bit of white will help. It'll also help it cover on top of the old purple if you're having that issue as well. There we go. Very spacey music too. Very sparkly. Okay, just giving an extra minute in case you're still adding the reddish purple or the bluish purple or anything in between. We'll be kind of fixing up our structures as the next step. So you can prep your medium round brush. And by prep, I mean just wash it off and have it ready. Otherwise, you can just relax for a minute. Hopefully I didn't get paint on myself there. Okay. 
Okay, let's have a look at this here. Okay, so I'll talk you through this a little bit and then we can do it together. But essentially what we're trying to do is highlight the light sides of these structures. So um, I kind of imagine anything on the left. So I guess I'll start with this. We have this middle point here. We have structures to the left, structures to the right. And I call it a middle point. It's not the middle of the canvas. I kind of mean the middle of the structures where they're meeting, where the road is going, where they're getting smallest and furthest away. So right around here. Um, so yeah, left hand side right hand side any of the faces of these structures that are kind of facing inwards to the middle so on this side it would be the right hand side and on this side it would be the left hand side we want to highlight those let me give you a nice close-up so what i did is i used two different shades actually i started with kind of this medium kind of bluish purple shade just used it to kind of carve out the top and side edges, pulled it down a little bit nice and messy. So you don't need to make a whole block of color, just kind of brings it down in nice vertical strokes. You can even make new structures within the darkness here. So rather than just working off of the top, you can do some little up, down, up, downs or side down, side down to make it look a little more like staircases or just like movement within these rocks here. And then I do a second shade that's even lighter and you can see that mostly kind of here, for example, kind of right at the top, just hitting the sides to really give a nice bright highlight on top. So we have this medium shade and then the light shade on top. So we're doing two different steps there. I guess the same step rather just with two different shades. So I've got my medium round brush ready. I'm going to go back to my plate. And if you have any of that bluish purple left over, the original bluish purple, you can use that with just a little bit of white in there. Little bit of white. And if you don't, just mix a little bit more. So I'm personally mixing a little bit more on my plate. Lots of blue with a little bit of red. And again, just a touch of white this time. We wanna lighten it up just a little bit. It's not the lightest color in the world, but just lighter than what we have. Lots of blue, a little bit of red, a little bit of white. Okay, I'm gonna take that brush, and again, I'm gonna highlight any side that's closest to the middle point. So not middle of canvas, but middle of where these structures are going. So I'm gonna look for the very tip top of each structure. We have this little point here. I'm going to bring it down to the right, straight down, and you can also carve out the middle here. So see how I'm highlighting this one edge? You can't really see that. Hold on. I'm going to make it a little bit lighter, a little bit lighter so you can see. So using the tip of my brush, starting at the very top of our little tip here, any of the little tips, I'm starting on the left though, bring it down, down, and then down the middle. So I'm making it a little more three-dimensional. I'm highlighting that right-hand side. Carving it out. And then you can do some vertical strokes kind of inside of that face there. It doesn't need to completely cover. You can see I covered a little bit, but we have some shade kind of pulling through. I personally really like that look. It makes it look a little more textured rather than just having a kind of straight color just going right on top. A nice bold color. Instead, I like it a little bit streaky. So I'm trying to use the tip of my brush, just lightly dragging down. I kind of leave the bottom a little more dark, right? Cause it's further down. So it's further away from any light. And I'll move on to the next one. So again, these won't pop a lot until the very end. It's just at the start that we're kind of doing these uh, medium shades. And then at the end, they will very much pop. So see how I'm really highlighting the top here? And then I'm just bringing it down a little bit looser until it kind of fades away. And these lines, they're great because they don't need to be perfectly straight. They can be a little bit shaky. They can be a little bit, again, kind of textured, a little bit transparent. Those all work out well for this. See, it's starting to come together. So I'll show you if you want to add like a little something extra in the bottom here. So here's an example. I'll do this next structure here. Over, over, not down. I'll just kind of keep this one a little higher up. 
And then I'll say, hey, I want a little more of like a staircase coming down. Even though it's not showing up here, we just want it a little bit further down. So I'll take this color and I'll go kind of over, down, over, down, brushing down with it. And now I've created kind of like new stepping stones to this structure, kind of resting on top of the, the one over here. Yes, this is where the magic really hits for me. Yes, yes! Get that power. My rock things are two different colors. It's like darker when I covered the sky. Oh, interesting. Darker when you cover the sky. Oh, so that might be because you covered the purple and the purple's giving a dark background so it makes it look a little darker. That makes sense. I would just let it dry, Brittany, and you can do another color on top. Or you can try putting the highlight on top and that might cover those inconsistencies. Maybe, I don't know if you can kind of see it in there. I'm not sure if I'm getting kind of the same thing, but because I'm adding the highlights on top of that, I think that'll become less noticeable. Let's try it, hold on. So again, you see that? I think that's the same thing you're seeing, right? A little darker, a little lighter. But watch this, when I put the little highlight on top, I'm sure it'll kind of remove it. At least it makes it less obvious. Yeah, and then you barely see it. You can maybe see it a tiny bit in there but hardly. So it's really up to you if you want to fix that up or not. But it would just be a second coat, I'm sure. Like mainly putting the second coat down here, but you can put it everywhere just to even it out. Mm hmm. <laughs> flesh, flesh, purple flesh. Awesome, no worries. Paul, you liking it? Ooh. <laughs> flesh, there's too many flushes. And you can do the stepping stones really wherever. I'm just gonna throw one maybe like right in here. It's just wherever I want maybe a little more structure, a little more activity down here rather than just plain dark purple. So yeah, a couple steps there, bringing down again. Ta-da, there's another one. There you go. I'm a gang of one. Me and you, me and you. I'm purple gang gang. I'm painting the purple painting. Erin, I'm saving my points for this point forward to get a custom painting. Yes, a lot of people are. Is this what you want for your painting? Something like this? Just on a 10 by 10 maybe, something similar. Let's do like one step right here, why not? Just a little bit more shape. Okay, so again, this middle point or wherever your structures are kind of meeting and going further away from you is where everything kind of changes. Everything's gonna change, ah! You're just gonna start highlighting the opposite side because we're now pointing in this way and we want the highlight to go on this side. So this time I'm now focusing on the left. So I'm going down to the left, pulling down like this, splitting in half. And I'm only gonna do that once or twice because I only have two structures sitting there, but maybe you have more. So do it as many times as you need to. So pulling down. So you'll get these two kind of front facing ones just kind of overlapping a little bit and that's fine. Purple Gang says court, nice. But yes, they are friends. Yes, like the background possibly no fork. Oh, okay, yeah, oh, that would be that'd be lots of fun. Yeah, for the custom paintings, I, uh, I don't promise like a huge painting like this or this much intricate detail, but I would love to do just like the background for you. That'd be so fun, Sorel, yeah, definitely. I'm gonna pull this down a little more, maybe right in here. So see how those structures are coming together. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Harmony, yep, we live in harmony, just as the chat painting says. Okay, Mystic, you're about to gain more power because we're about to do the nice highlights right on top now. So again, this was step one of two for these structures. We want to do a second step with a lighter version of what we just made. So a lighter color than this color we just had here. So I'll give a quick minute if you're still adding, but I am quickly on my plate mixing a lighter version of my current color I was just mixing or using rather. So just adding more white into your existing color. So still lots of blue, little red, and now more white in there. This is gonna really make them pop. Pop. Okay. 
So whenever you're ready, I've now got again this bluish purple with more white in there. See how light it's getting. It's like a nice almost lavender now. Almost, almost. And we're doing the same thing. <laughs> you sweating. <laughs> Same thing except less. We don't want to do the exact same thing. We would just be covering up all the work that we just did. But this time I'm just sticking a little bit higher up. So you can see I'm sticking to this top corner here. I'll maybe bring it down the side a little bit, bring a few strokes down, very loose. But then I'll maybe stop around there. So we have a nice transition. Now we have the nice light on top, kind of medium coming down and the dark stays on the outside there. So a nice big highlight, yeah. <laughs> Oh, we can get along. Live in harmony, everybody. They're just dating their favorites and that's okay, as long as they live in harmony with each other. So again, really just piling on top of what you have, just a little bit less with a lighter color. Over, down, a couple verticals coming down, just very loose. There we go. I'm just kind of like flicking the brush down. That helps keep it nice and loose. Just do the sound effects if it helps you. Going all the way along. You can do it on these little step ladders here too, like any of the extras. I just kind of highlight the corners and do a couple strokes down just minimally so they catch the light. This guy here deserves a little bit of notice. Veins burst. You good? Vein and forehead. Mm -hmm. You can even highlight the side a little more if you want. Just go little bits at a time. And always remember, if something looks a little wrong, if you think you maybe went a little too heavy on something, especially this highlight color, just go backwards, go do the last color. You can cover things up, right? So no worries. Just go little bits at a time for now, but if you go a little too far, you can always go backwards. Just pile on more. And that makes them pop. There we go. Yeah. So again, go backwards if you need to. If you need to go add this medium shade again, maybe you didn't add enough, you can do that. Go back to the dark shade if you need to clean anything up or kind of separate anything, do that. I'll give you a minute or two. We don't have a lot left. Just wanna make sure we're all on pace. Take your time. And I always stick around after, so if you're kind of falling behind at this point or have any questions, I will stick around after to uh, answer any questions. Just finished an eye of my Sophie rip. <laughs> Why is it rip? Do you not like it? This is your, uh, your sketched out dog painting, correct? I love that you sketched it all out, K9. Just because you've been doing your paint by numbers, I think that makes total sense. It's a good idea. I think it'll help you kind of separate colors. Rest in peace. Oh, it's your, oh, I'm sorry, K9. I was confused. Thought you meant like rip the eye. Oh, I didn't realize that was your dog that passed away. I'm so sorry. I thought maybe you were doing, no, no, that's, it's Duke, right? Who, what's your dog, um, your other dog's name? No worries. Yeah, big confusion. <laughs> I thought you were doing your uh, your current dog, honestly. Oh, poor pup. Duke. Okay, I was. Okay. I knew it was a D and I think I said Duke. Anyway, cool, cool. All right. You're doing, Sophie. I gotcha. It's turning out, though. Mountains and me are not best friends. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Send me a photo, Charlene. I can help you. No worries. Sure, sure. Gritty! I'm at work. Came in to see the painting. Was it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> that 
that's so fun of you. <laughs> Checking in. <laughs> I didn't forget. Gertie had to take it down to show everybody quickly, but otherwise it's up there. It's up there. <laughs> that's really funny. <laughs> Hope work's going well tonight. Uh, you're right, Sheridan Discard. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, cool. Yeah, feel free to send it in, Charlene. All good. And let me know, yeah, in the meantime, if I can help you. If you can type it out, let me know. Gertie, Gertie, Gertie. She checking in from work, everybody. She wanted to make sure her painting was up. And it is. No one has switched it. No one has redeemed. Point redemptions are off right now. So <laughs> you're safe for now, Gertie. I turned them off during tutorials, so... You're very lucky. All right, let's look at the last few steps. As usual, optional. If you're liking how it is right now, that's fine. In my world, on my planet, I had a little road going off to who the heck knows where. I liked this idea of like going on an adventure. I don't know what's behind these big structures, but we're gonna go and check it out. I was almost gonna do a little like camper van type thing, but I thought it would be a little too much. So I just left an open road. Maybe this is like the view from the van, you know? So I'm gonna go back to this kind of like reddish purple color, just with more white now. So I'm washing off my brush, same brush, the nice medium round brush. But tomorrow, yeah, Gray's already eyeing it. <laughs> tomorrow. Video stop, mo oh no. Yeah, mobile's brutal. I know it, I know it. Refresh. You can't see me <laughs> or hear me. <laughs> so on my plate, everybody, I'm mixing lots of red, a little bit of blue, and then mixing lots of white in there. Lots of red, little blue, lots of white. So we're essentially making a lighter version of this color here to match, right? Back, fix some citrus green tea. Ooh, sounds yummy, dragon. You can see it all come together in the final pieces while sipping on your tea, relaxing. That sounds lovely. Okay. And my road is nice and windy, so I'm going to start it anywhere in here. And I would recommend the same. If you have an area where your structures or mountains are kind of disappearing, you probably want your road to disappear around there too. So I'm just going to do a little dot just to make sure I know that's where my disappearing point is. So over here, the road's going to be very, very small because it's furthest away. And as it gets closer to us, it's going to get nice and wide. Audio keeps cutting out. Mobile going to go. See you, Gertie. Thank you for popping in. Have a good day at work. See ya. Good night. Excuse me. So if you want, you could start with just a very thin line and then do all the thickening and widening, and widening as you go. So I'm just going to start here. And I'm just using the tip of my brush and I'm just going to do a nice windy road. I'm going to swing kind of in, swing out again, move a lot to the left, and just kind of come down. So that's just one solid line. I'll do all the winding in a second. <laughs> Good too, thanks. Oh yeah, Charlene. So lots of red, a little bit of blue, and then lots of white. So essentially taking this color and adding lots of white to it. Making a lighter version of our nice reddish purple color. So again, I made mine a nice snaky road, kind of curves in and out, right? Now to get that depth, I'm going to make sure this is nice and wide over here, kind of down here, and it gets thinner as it comes further up. So let's just start by making this nice and wide. So I'm just going to paint some extra strokes kind of around, getting it nice and wide. I'm going to have to look straight on for this here. I'm just kind of following the curve, whoops, following the curve, keeping it a little bit thinner as I go. So I have a nice wide road here. I'm gonna keep widening it, but just not as much as I go. I'm gonna keep it a little bit thinner.
see how it looks like it's kind of snaking away. Switch to a tiny brush if you need to, especially at the very end here if you need to make it nice and thin. Oh, thank you so much, Cindy. That means a lot just because I know you liked the original so, so much. And these were your idea, right? Yeah. I know I kind of altered it a little bit, but I used your references there. Your idea of the desert look, I thought it was very cool. that a little bit see how it kind of like if you look at the full width it kind of looks wide and then it almost pinches in a bit you want to make sure that doesn't happen so make sure it's always getting wider so I'm just gonna make sure this is a little wider here maybe this bottom parts a little bit wider there we go now it really looks like it's coming at us a little more even I can play with this all day Cool. Okay, then when you have that on, uh, the only other detail I add is just a little dotted line in the road. I guess uh, on this planet, our roads are kind of paved and painted. <laughs> so I have a little dotted line going up the middle. It doesn't go all the way. It starts uh, right at the bottom and you can see, I just kind of make it disappear at the end. I just literally stop adding dots because it gets too far away. So I start with some small little tick marks. They get smaller, smaller, smaller. They turn into dots and then they just disappear about like two thirds of the way up the road. So I'm using a teeny tiny brush and I'm using a slightly darker purple. So just using maybe more red and blue in your existing purple. Claw hammer, looking great by the way. Thank you so much and welcome in. Have you been watching the whole time? It's kind of cool to see it all come together, right? So again, I'm just starting near the bottom here. I'll do some tick marks going right up the middle. Again, I'm gonna have to pull ahead here to see uh, straight on. Just like a regular road, nothing fancy. The tick marks get smaller as they get further away and maybe closer together as well. Eventually I just start to kind of dot them on and then I'll just make them disappear. Right around here, I just kind of like stop dotting. Just makes it look like it fades away. Look amazing. Thank you, Dragon. Just when you were finishing the mountains around that. Oh, okay. That's okay. That's okay. You still saw it kind of come together, especially the mountains with those little highlights. Very cool. Yeah, I do this about once a week, Clawhammer, where I do like step-by-step -step tutorials in about a two-hour period. Mochi, thank you for the follow. I just saw that. My alerts are off because of the tutorial. But I'm on a lot more in the week too. I'm just not teaching. I'm just doing regular art. It's all art. It's all the same art. <laughs> it's just not teaching the art. <laughs> anyway, I'm glad you've been enjoying. All right, so that was technically the last step, everybody. Just doing these nice little tick marks in the road. That was my little detail. Again, you can do just a nice regular kind of dirt road, unpaved road, whatnot. But that's what I chose to do. Again, it's your world. Do whatever you want. And as the last step, I always say, mm-hmm, <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> are you typing it, Brittany? Last step is signing it. There she is. <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> I rem I've been remembering a lot more recently, Brittany. You'd be proud of me. So yes, yeah, sign your painting when you're all done. I always like to do that as the final step or else I find that I never stop painting. I just want to keep going and going and going. So signing it is like, I'm done. I'm all done. I like what I got. Sign it. Yeah, all good. 
very cool. Gotta remember to check out your other stuff on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Clawhammer. Yeah. Um, I, I up, so I'll upload this, for example, in a few days on YouTube. So all of my past tutorials, there's like 40-ish on there now. So many. Otherwise, I do these weekly live. And it's fun to tune in live. That way you can ask questions and stuff, right? So whatever you feel, though. I love this guy on this one. Thank you, Burb. Thank you. <laughs> Looks great. Thank you. You smelling better? I smell... Oops, good. <laughs> hello, hello. How's your night going, Spook? This is awesome. Yay! It was Deborah, right? Totally enjoy it. We'll be coming back. Awesome! I'll be online tomorrow. I'm not doing a tutorial, but I'm just doing some regular painting if you feel like hanging out. But otherwise, uh, yeah, next Friday I'll be doing another one. Pong, pong, pong. Yay! All right, yeah. Thanks everybody for coming. Um, if anyone has any questions, again, I'm hanging out here for a bit, so ask me any questions about your painting, my painting, anything else I do. I'm down to talk about it. Um, thank you, Gray. Yeah, if you want to support me, um, subscriptions are a great way to do that. Gray has information about subbing in the chat. Also, Prime subscription for free. If you have Amazon Prime, you can subscribe for, for free. Support me while not taking any more money out of your pocket. It's all right there. Um, Otherwise, there's like tip links and stuff if anyone insists on doing that. Uh, but mainly what I wanted to say was, I want to see your photos. If you did paint with me tonight, please post your photos. Thank you, Gray. Um, lots of places to do that. You can use Instagram. Just tag me, Aaron Bun Paints. Uh, you can go to Facebook if you want. Um, specifically on Facebook, you'll see that there was an event page for this event. And I recommend going there to post it. So you can open up. Let's see if I can even show you. Maybe not. Well, yeah, let's do it. I don't think there's anything doxing here. Nope, we're good. <laughs> Always got to be careful. Check this out. So those are all my past tutorial events. We can go here and you can post in the discussion. I'm about to edit it to make sure everyone has a uh, ability to post. Now everyone can post. Ta -da! So if you go to the discussion, you can post a nice photo of your painting. Lovely. Whoa! Whoa, 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 whoa! Hold on. Claw hammer. What are you doing? Gift in five says, my gosh, thank you so much, claw hammer. Wow, 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 wow. Thank you. Charlene, you just got gifted a sub. You can now use bun emotes. Miko, you're still here. You got gifted a sub. Amanda, OCD, Mary. Oh, beautiful people. These are like perfect people. They're always here. Five loving people. Claw hammer. That's so kind of you. Thank you so much for just popping in the stream and enjoying. Thank you so much. That's so kind. Yep, Charlene. There's Miko. See, they're all right here. I know Mary was here earlier. OCD was as well. Amanda, I saw earlier today. Thank you so, so much. That's very kind of you. And I love when that happens for gifting because that means other people get some benefits too. So thank you so much. Ah. Anyway, yeah, post your photos. <laughs> post your photos to Facebook, to Instagram. Discord is an option as well for those who prefer Discord. And uh, if you want to see more of me, I'll be on tomorrow at 10 a.m. EST. Again, I'm hanging out for a bit, just letting you know in case you're going. Um, and I always post my schedules here on Twitch, on Facebook, on Discord, all the places. So you can always know when to find me. Yeah. Oh, and tutorial, a sec another tutorial is coming up Friday. I do most of these on Friday nights. Sometimes I do them twice a week. Mostly, uh, honestly, that's been mostly once a week right now. But if you want to learn how to paint this rainy Toronto front street type vibe, I'll be teaching this step by step on Friday. If you have any questions, let me know. 